you can expand upon it. You can deliver upon it according to your realization and expand the knowledge, but you can't change it by embellishing it in an unauthorized way. So these key statements, regular guru, that's all. Regular is an adjective meaning under regulation. A Mahabhagavat is not a regular guru. A, a person who has reached the stage of spontaneity called Raga Anuga, he's not a regular person because he's no longer a spontaneous. Regulation has been transcended. But Prabhupada said, regular guru, that's all. But by my order. So two things were very clearly, actually, it wasn't so subtle, very clearly communicated. One, all you're qualified for is being a regular guru. Two, but you're not qualified yet. It's going to have to be when I order it. But that's all you're going to be qualified when I order it. Regular guru, that's all, but by my order. Now, everybody must admit that he did not give the order while he was physically manifest. If that order had been given uh, and it had been taped and had been written and transcribed and signed by him, we would all know about it, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you as much as the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Every disciple would know about that document. Every disciple would know about that tape. Every disciple would have by now heard that tape. Prophet never gave the order. Now, the fanatics on the other end of the teeter-totter, they take that and say, Prophet never gave that order, so therefore nobody can be guru. That's wrong. What a nonsense that is. What faithlessness that is. We have the highest occult process. Bhakti, all yoga processes are based on mysticism. They're all based on the occult. Occult means hidden. When something is occult, it means it's hidden to, to contemporary, ordinary vision. It's an occult truth. And to reach it, you have to have some occult knowledge. You have to have some occult wisdom. You have to have some occult vision. You have to have some sensitivity to how things are actually working, what the meanings of things, symbol, symbolic understandings, for example. There's more than, it, but, than that, but that's just one division of occult knowledge. So, for a practitioner of any yoga system, what to speak of the highest, buddhi yoga, yoga of the intelligence, and not to be able to have contact, some kind of contact with your spiritual master even after he departs physical embodiment. Of course, his body was not a material body in, in the sense that we know material bodies, but still, he had a physical form that could be seen that could be touched, that no longer is present with us. He's no longer functioning in that form. But to say that then the disciple can't have any contact with him? Nonsense. Then that's faithlessness. That's materialism. That's not spiritual life. So anybody can receive the order if they receive the order. It's as simple as that. If somebody is a Brahmin, Brahmin means, qualified Brahmin, of course, really means to be Brahma realized. But anyone who's a Brahmin who has the qualities of the Sattva Guna and yet hasn't quite reached yet the stage of being Brahma realized, anyone on that plane, he's an honest man. Brahma karma svabhavajam. Arjabam is one of the key qualities of being a Brahmin. So any honest person will say, I've received the order, he says, and he's received the order, he can be guru. But regular guru, that's all. Means under regulation. Now, one may then take that and say, well, then, can anybody ever become a Mahabharata again? Sure. No problem. If you go into the gym and you say to the guy who's running the gym, what's your fees here? I'm, a, I'm the, one of the best weightlifters in the world. I'm right on the level of what Arnold Schwarzenegger was. What's your, what's your fees? You're on that level? Yeah. I can bench press two times my weight. Oh, man, you show me. You go, to that, you go to that bench right now, I'll put 210. Get on the scale, okay, you weigh 250. I'm gonna, put the, I'm gonna put the two times on. You bench press it, you got free here. I want you around. So if you're a Mahabhagava, you don't have to use any legalistic arguments. You already have all the mystic cities. 
you already have full knowledge. If you're a Mahabhagava, you can prove you're a Mahabhagava quite easily. And when you prove it, then what is the problem there? Everybody who's sincere and serious and has knowledge and is lucky is going to come to you. You're going to have plenty of protection. Even without human beings, you'd have plenty of protection. So the fact is that a Mahabhagavad is self-effulgent. He will manifest according to his powers. He will manifest according to his great knowledge. And most importantly, since our system is Bhakti Yoga, he will manifest according to his ocean of love. He will have an ocean of love, which we're all getting a little drop of now and then. And with that ocean of love, uh, he will have no problem being able to uh, show that he's Mahabharata. He won't want to be worshipped. He won't need to be worshipped. His followers will insist upon worshipping him for their own benefit and advancement, which he'll then acquiesce to. Why not? Sakshat Hari Prenastamasta Shastri. Everything he's saying is directly Paramatma, directly Krishna. So therefore, he's Shakshad Hari. He's not different from Hari on that basis. He's still Jiva Tattva, but he's a Sampradaya Chari. He's a Mahavagra. He's a Mahajan. Prabhupada makes it very clear that any Sampradaya Chari is a Mahajan also. So the, the, the process is not too difficult to understand. Regular guru, that's all. And if for some reason you get benedicted by the Supreme Personality of God and by your previous guru, and you get the transcendental TV allowed to your mind, and now you're in the spiritual world, and now you have the full siddhis, you have the full mystic powers, and you're now a Mahabhagavat, and you have full knowledge, if you get that benediction, then that will be self-evident, because you'll be self-effulgent to anybody. And the envious, of course, will attack you, but so what? You'll be able to deal with that. The process is very simple. The process is now complicated because of why? because of evil, because what produces evil? Evil is produced when you act either above or below your eligibility. Everybody has an adhikari, adhikar. Adhikar means eligibility. Everybody where they're at. So if you're at some place, then according to that eligibility, you act according to it, that's not evil. That's why the animals are never engaged in evil activity because they're always acting according to their adhikari. But a human, can do evil because he can act either above or below what he's eligible for. So when he acts above, he's an imitator, he's a pretender. It's a great evil. Why is it a great evil? This is not difficult to understand psychologically why, why it's a great evil. Because if somebody acts above their realization and pretends to be a, a, a guru when they're not, or pretends to be a Mahabhagavat when they're not, what happens? They slip up and it becomes known. They do criminal activities of some sort. They do dreadful activities of some sort. They do unauthorized activities of some sort. They make some colossal mistake. They uh, fall victim to some huge illusion. They engage in libertine activities, whatever it may be. They do something grievous. And then what happens to everybody? They think evil is supreme. They think there's no hope. There's no guru. We see anybody who tries to do anything gets nailed. Everybody's a pretender. Everybody's just trying to deceive one another. Everybody's trying to get over. It's just a colossal hoax. It's all a turtle tank. Everybody's trying to get on top of the other's shell and then pivot up and get up to the top of the, the aquarium on the basis of pushing the others down. Uh, it's all it's all evil. Evil is supreme enters into the consciousness when this pretension goes on. That's why if you act above your adhikar and pretend to be a guru when you're not on any of the levels, be it with the two feet in, one foot in, one foot out, or both feet out, whatever the three levels. If you if you're not there, then it's evil because you're acting above your and if you. If your adhikari is that you should be doing certain things and you're not doing them, and you're doing things much lower than what you really have the power and the knowledge to do, and you're not stepping up to the plate and doing it, you're going to produce evil on the other end. 